On this episode of The Sequence, I will show you the power of drum programs. The Sequence. What is going on, guys? Programs, programs, programs. Yes, I always say it wrong, but I like programs. But drum programs have a significance to them that are very key to your workflow inside of the MPC or the MPC software or even the MPC beat software. And that's what I want to explain in this video because let's keep it real. Do you like to search for each and every one shot of your drum or have like a sample all the way over here that you use all the time? No. I mean, come on, I listen to the music right now and yeah, the drums are about the same, but that's besides the point. Let's go ahead and get into it. Leave a comment below. So what is a drum program? Well, you're looking at one right now. So anytime you start an empty project, you get an empty drum program and it'll say like unused because there's nothing happening right now. And what a drum program, it consists of 16 or up to 128 pads if you go from pad A to pad H, and this is what you call a four by four traditional Akai MPC layout. And you know, they're staying true to that layout. If I show you the MPC right over here, and it, this does have some relevance to what we're gonna talk about in this video, because you can uh, set up your drum programs for you to load up in here and inside of the MPC Live X or one via the SD card slot or your hard drive or whatever you wanna set up inside of your MPCs. So yeah, anyway, so let's go ahead and pull up a drum program from over here. I'm gonna use uh, one of Decaf's drums over here uh, because there's a little bit more nuance to it. Uh, you can hear the drums right now. You know, nice and crispy drums here. Uh, again, you have different uh, attributes like note repeat that you can set up in your drum program. You also could do half level, 16 level, which can be either tune, velocity, filter, layer, attack and decay. And you can set those up uh, per pad or whatever type of pad you want to do. And, and you can also erase whatever is in your drum program as well. But I'm going to show you some other things too. So uh, basically just pulling that up what I'm gonna do is just go and set up a new program program 2 and that's by hitting that plus sign so we can have something and what I'm gonna do is do one of my funk kits I'm gonna just say funk kit for right now uh, actually uh, to be honest I actually can pull up my drums from my drum programs from my MPC that I have I actually from the 2500 all the way up to the live X01 so it can do older programs we'll talk more about that in a little later uh, let's go ahead and load up, I don't know, one of my funk drums that everybody uh, really likes, the funk drum kit. So I'm just going to go ahead and double tap, and then you can select it over here, even though I named it funk kit already. Uh, boom. So hear it. And all that stuff there. So, yeah, I mean, you can set it yourself up for success. So how do you set yourself up for success now? Let's go ahead and do that. Well... I'm going to go into an empty drum program. I'm going to go and navigate over here to this part of the screen, which will be at the bottom part. And you can just go and select whatever uh, folders. So I'm going to go over here and select uh, the Kill Bill drum kit I got. And I'm going to make sure that I select this right here. If we look at the top part, you'll see that I have programs selected. There's no programs in there. Uh, what I need is the wave or has as Andy calls it, WAV files. Shout out to Andy Mac. But yeah, so let's go ahead and select some sounds. I'm gonna go ahead and select this snare. And it's as simple as just dragging and drop it uh, over wherever you want. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and select another one here. Let's go ahead. Matter of fact, I got that one already in there. Let's use that one. And let's go ahead and select some other ones. Uh, let's go and grab that. And then we're going to grab another one. There we go. And there we have snares. I'm going to go ahead and just set it up real quick. I just want to show you that quick process. All right. So I'm done now. And now you can see that I have a drum program full of stuff. I got kicks and stuff like that in one row, which is the way I like to set it up because, you know, figuratively, I would be playing it on the pads or whatever because I, I lay out my drums like that. 
or you know, I got it set up to my push too right now, so it's a little wonky for me. But yeah, just setting up your drum program so that you can win, so you can actually program your drums is kind of key. And one of the things I want to show you is, of course, the first thing is naming your drum program. So I would just name it, I don't know, like what I usually do is uh, like maybe I'll say trap drum kit, you know, trap kit, boom. You know, make sure that you have a name here. I'm going to say like Kill Bill, uh, Bill 3. And then I will put in like TTS, which is Trap Tendo Tune Studio. You know, just s simple things to where you can find your kits for a little later and it makes sense to you. Uh, once you put that in there, uh, you'll see it over here into your project over here. And you'll also see the different files that are in there as well. Like you'll see your sample pool. Uh, your whole program sample pool is over here too as well where you have all your samples and stuff like that. Though you can delete them uh, at will. If you have five, to, let me see if I can uh, delete one and I won't really be tripping. Uh, I guess I could delete or you can purge unused samples over here. And you know, you can delete all samples, but you know, if you want to purge samples, that are unused that is one thing that i want to show you as far as like if you're making a track and you want to save those programs so that way you don't have to uh, worry about that uh, because to be involved in that but anyway so uh you have this program over here uh now it's called kill bill and you know perhaps you want to use it you made this fire beat and you want to save that beat well guess what you can uh what you could do is just right click on here on windows and then you will hit save and once you hit save you know you will save it into a folder that will be uh corresponded to wherever you will have your drum so for me uh seeing that i want to pull this up on my mpc live over here if i want to pull it up on the live over here i would do uh e i would do e then i would go into my drum programs over here the name is already set up you know, there's no other name for that. So I already know what it, time it is when I pull it up. Uh, you can save it in a new folder. I actually think it would be smarter to actually save them into a folder each and every drum program. Because once it saves the, uh, the file as an XPM, uh, it will dump those samples that are in that particular drum program. Uh, to be quite frank. And, you know, that can get a little messy if you want to keep things cleaner. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and just save it. I've, I've already internally damned myself but there are other things too as well you know that you can do with your drum program uh, to make this more relevant to you when you pull it up on the mpc and that is you can change the pad colors let's go over here to the top left side of the screen over here and then uh we're gonna go ahead and select it right now so you would go into i believe edit and program and then you will select pad color uh, from here, you will be pulled and welcome to this screen right here where it says uh, edit all pads. Uh, you can change all the pads to a certain color. Uh, you can edit single pads, of course, and change them into relevant colors or whatever. So if I want to do that, I can do that. Uh, you know, I could do classic velocity and fixed. So I'm going to go ahead and do fixed because that's the way I like to change my pads. You know, I can highlight all of the snares and make them pink or whatever so they can show up on the pads and whatnot. And this is all relevant to if you are a drummer, a finger drummer or anything like that. Uh, this is definitely not the way Akai likes to do it, but this is the way I like to do it. So uh, you can pull up any of Akai's drum packs and you can see how they set theirs up because they use melodics too as well. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go with green for the effects. So let's go ahead and green with the effects and set that up, boom, 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 boom. And now I guess I'll go with red for my kicks. Boom. So let's set up all the kicks. And we are good to go here. And then say make default. Uh, do you want to change, want to store all these pad settings as a default for all drum programs? Uh, no, I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is click no. And therefore, we have it all together here and we didn't mess up anything. I almost messed up something here. Uh, but yeah, remember, you know, you do have to save it to make sure that it's relevant to what you're doing here. Uh, I actually had to go and select, you know, my uh, SD card slot. And 
Now I'm gonna go over here, drum programs. That's the where I save all my drum programs. And then I'm gonna override it. The next thing I'm gonna show you is very relevant. So I'm gonna go to the top left side of the screen here and I'm gonna select that. You can also use control plus three. And now we have another part that we can mess with here. Again, everything is here, but perhaps you wanna add effects to your pass and stuff like that. We're in the, the program editor. So you would go and select your program uh, that you wanna use. And then you can go and select many different things here. Uh, you can select if you want to, you know, make a choke group, uh, you can make them mono, but you can select different choke groups and, and mute targets, simultaneous play. Uh, you can change the whole entire semitone of the master. Mind you, this is the master section here. Uh, and let's go into semitones here. And you can see everything has changed at once. So let me go ahead and do that on this. So you can pretty much sound design your snares in here. You know, as, that's a simple way of putting sound as... That's a simple as that's a simple example of sound design, though a lot of you guys do that. You can also add more samples on there. So if you want to uh, layer a kick with an effect or something like that, you can. And you know that's one thing that you could do. You can also uh, change the pan and all that stuff uh, for that whole entire set, or you can do all that individually over here. You can change the semitone and all that. Change the velocity level. Uh, you can change the filter envelope. You can change the amplitude envelope and the filter is, as well. You can filter out certain things. So when you hit that uh, pad again, let's go ahead and uh, turn down the cutoff really, really, really extreme. And you can hear that. Let's go a little bit more. And let's go ahead and open it up again. So you can hear the difference. So. Yeah, you can do a lot of stuff here that could really help out uh, your workflow in terms of like making a brand new kit out of even the same kit that you probably created. You can even add LFOs too as well. And let's go ahead and just do some nutty stuff here. I'm going to do a nutty uh, LFO on <laughs> that uh, kick. And, you know, you can do that and sign that. Uh, you can change it in one shot to note on and you also can change the the mode that is in right now it's in mono mode I can do poly and all that stuff if you want to add effects well you have to go to the bottom left corner and hit this button right here which is pad channel and you would hit a different pad and you know perhaps you might want to add I don't know some reverb on something you know to make something hit harder or whatever perhaps you might want to lo-fi or something like that I'll just add something real quick. I'll just add a uh, air reverb and let's hear it. And of course you can adjust it. Now this is in your pad, not on your program altogether. Uh, that's where you have to learn how the differences between program channel. Uh, if you go to program channel, you see it's not on your program channel or on your MIDI channel or anything like that. So just make sure that you understand that that is on your pad so that's how you would add effects on there and then you know once you're done save it and then you can pull it up anywhere anytime and create a beat so let's go ahead and put what we have in here inside of the mpc live here i'm gonna go ahead and exit out of the mpc beat software don't save i'm gonna pull up the sounds that i have on my sd card the drum program that i just did in the software on the MPC Live. Here we go. Go into my drum programs. I'm gonna select the programs. I'm gonna look for that kit that says Kill Bill 3. We're pulling up everything. Now I go back to my main and everything's here. So as you can see, drum programs are really powerful because now I can bring my drums on the road because this can be unplugged and I can use it with just the speaker and I can use it with my laptop no matter what. And if I really wanted to, I could use it inside of the MPC 2500 too as well that I own. So tell me how you feel about this video. Yeah, drum programs are very, very, very significant to the workflow inside of the MPC the beat software, anything, honestly. And 
if you can pull up your drums extremely fast and get to working really fast, that increases your workflow 100%. Like nobody likes to search for drums. It, you, yeah, we collect a lot of drums and we like to download them from great sites and some of you guys from Reddit. But yeah, drum programs make everything massively easy and also help with your sound design too.